Hello everyone, I am Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works. And today we're here for another episode of my Power Query series, where we are going to get into Power Query in Power BI and also look at it in Power Query in Excel and see how we can do the same thing in this tool in both places and talk about any differences there might be. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about doing a merge in Power Query. So when you have two separate file sources and you want to bring them together with a merge. So let's get into it. Let's start talking about how we are able to do this merge in Power Query to combine some data sources together. Now, when we are doing a merge, this is adding columns from one table to another table. So last time we did an append where we are bringing rows from one table to the other. This time we need to make sure that our row structure is the same. So when we're adding new columns on, those will line up. When we are doing a merge, we have to choose our join type. And based on our join type, different information will come through. When we are doing this, it is also important that we need to have at least one matching column. So the content in one column needs to be the same. So that way Power Query understands how this information on one table relates to the data in the other table and how that will match up. So when we're doing a merge, a few things to consider. First off, what type of join are we going to do? And also, do we have a at least one column that is the same content? It could be different amounts of that content, but we need to have the same content in one column on each table. Now, we also, when we're looking at these join types, let's kind of go over that and see the different varieties. Now, if you know SQL, these are really similar. They're just like that. If you don't know SQL, that is also totally okay because we're gonna go over it. So first off, we can have a left outer, we can have a right outer, we can do a full outer, an inner join, and then there are also left anti and right anti. Now, looking at these, you can kind of guess like, okay, of this one, I'm bringing this info over this one, it's just this part. I would say that a left outer is probably most popular because by default, a lot of people, that's the first option. So most people go with that. So it's really similar to a V lookup. An inner join is what we are going to be doing today, and that is when the content from both matches up. So the conditions kind of have to be exact to get that inner join. Now, I love this one site. I will link it below so you can use it as well, but anytime that I have a merge to do and I have multiple data sets bringing over and I need to think through, okay, what am I bringing from this table and what do I wanna bring from this table? What is the same here? How can I make this work? This is where I go. Now, this is on the Power BI community and it is awesome. So what we're looking at over here, we have all of our join types around the top here. So we have our left outer, right outer, our inner, full outer, left anti-join, right anti-join, and then a full anti-join. And the way that this works is we have table A over here, table B over here. It's a very interesting uh, data source if you are into late 90s, early 2000s pop culture. It's a fun one to look at. And what we have in table A is their ID, their name, and then we have this is joined column. And then in table B, we have their ID. So that would be our match. So the ID in both is the same. And then we have an email. Then again, we also have this is join. And that is just showing, hey, depending on the join type that we are selecting up here, what is coming into this table. So if we have a left anti, we can see that's bringing everything from table A and just these from table B. If we did the opposite, where we did a right anti, everything is coming over from table B. And then here's the ones that are gonna come over from table A. 
inner join. This is what we are going to do in our example next. We can see that only the ones that are in table A and in table B are coming over and we can see the behavior. So this is an excellent way to practice and just like visualize what is happening when we are doing a join and we have different data and different amounts of that and different types of it and all that good stuff to practice. And I will link this below so you can use this as well. So let's get into our example. I am here in Power Query in Power BI. And I already did some work cleaning up my data. So I brought in two different Excel sheets. And odds are when you are working with your data, you are not gonna get it in the perfect format, ready to go, ready to just like bloop, add that on, really nice without much effort. Most of the time you're gonna have to go through and do some editing steps to your data to get it into a shape where it matches up. For this data, I had to kind of promote my headers. I did an unpivot to swing that kind of very flat, denormalized sheet, move that into kind of from a pivot table format into actual columns of data, and then renaming those. And always have renaming step. I am a big stickler for making sure that you have good names in your data. It makes it easy for you as you're working with it and also anyone else down the line that has to work with this data set. So making sure you're renaming it, making sure all of those columns, anything else you've created is nice and clear. So in this data set, in this table, we have the country, so a column with a bunch of countries in it. We have the year and we have the income, or really the GDP, for that country for every year. And the next one is a population table, and I went through really similar steps here, kind of how it started out, making sure I got those headers promoted, doing that unpivot to get it out of that pivot format and move it into more columns that we would be able to utilize in a lot better fashion and of course renaming to make it really clear now in this one we have the country the year and the population now this is in a fantastic setup to be able to do a merge because in one table i have country year and income and the next i have country year and population so really with this, I want to end up with a new table that has country, year, income, and population. So I already have the country, I already have the year, and now I just need to make sure that I'm getting income and population in here. So when we are doing a merge, just like when we are doing an append, I can merge one directly on to the other one. So if I want income to be my main one, I've got country, year, and income there, and I just want to add on this last population column, I could do that. Now, if you watch the append video, which if you didn't watch that after this one, when we're working on this, I always prefer to have a new one. So instead of doing a regular merge where I'm going to merge one table into the other one, I like to do a merge as new where I take two, the separate ones, and bring them over into a fully new one. I personally just like to be able to look at the original sources separate and be able to have that history really clean and clear. So what we are going to do instead is we are going to have a new item down here and I'm going to move population and income into this. And we're gonna end up with four columns as our end result country, year, income, and population. Now, whatever table I have selected first, that's my starting point, that would be kind of the main one. So then if I want to say, let's bring over and have population as the first one, and then we'll go to income and grab income, we can do it that way. Or if we start on income, we'll have country, year, income, and then we'd move population into that. So always before you do your merge, take a few seconds to understand the mechanics of what is moving there and where you want things to end up. So if I have income selected, I can go up here in my home ribbon and I have a merge queries section. And I have this drop down right here in merge queries. And of course, I could just click merge. That would then merge one into the other. What I want to go with is that merge as new where we are getting a fully separate source now. So when we click on that merge as new, we're gonna see a nice little pop-up come up where we have our first option, which is income. If you're doing a merge as new, you can go through this and easily modify and change it. We'll stick with income as our first one and then move population into the second one. 
Now, when you're doing a merge, you have to have a matching key column, at least one. You can have more, you can have five, 20, depends on the data you're bringing over and how similar those sources are, but you need to at least have one. So for ours, we have country and country and year and year are both the same. So to multi-select, I'm going to click on the first one, which is country. I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard as I select the rest. So I'm going to select country next, then I'll do year on the top and then year on the bottom. And if you notice, as soon as I did that, we got these little numbers here. So I've got a one and a one next to country. You want to make sure these match up and a two and a two next to year. Now we are not going to select income and we're not going to select population because those are not the same. They're two different columns and so those are not the match. Country is a match and year is a match so those two get selected. Now in our join kind, remember we just looked over all of these different types, the left outer, right outer, full, inner, antis. We want to go with the inner and that's only going to give me matching rows from both. So I can see that, look, really easily, I've got Afghanistan, 1,800 in income and Afghanistan, 1,800 in a population, fantastic, that's a match. However, I have Afghanistan, 1,870 population, but I don't have Afghanistan, 1,870 income. So what that's gonna do is that's going to take out 1,870 completely. So when you're doing an inner join, you are gonna get no blanks. So if that is your goal, you don't have any blanks in your data, you would wanna go with an inner join. And I can see right down here how much it is matching from each of those tables so I can get a better view of how many blanks I would have had if I had done a different join type. I'm gonna now hit okay. And we're gonna see our new third table that is a combination of income and population. Now, we have all of population in one column. And so it's just giving me a table because I have everything here. And I need to now tell Power Query what columns from this table I want to bring over. And so we know anytime that we have a different icon here, anything aside from just our normal drop down, we know we need to take an action. So with a split arrow one, that's where you're expanding out your table. And I'm going to choose from here, what do I want to bring over? Now we already have country and year on this table, so I do not need to bring them over again. Only thing I want to bring over is population. I'm also going to uncheck this use original column name as prefix because it just gives you extra stuff you'd have to delete out of your header. So population is the only thing that is checked and we're going to hit OK. And now this population column turns into actually just the population. You'll see a lot of times you'll have like extra little numbers and things on here and you can go through and just delete those to clean it up and keep your naming structure done. So now we went through, we started off with two sources, really similar. We had country and year in both of them. And now I'm able to see the country, the year, the income and the population all together in one. And so I can also go and check to make sure that my sources are pulling from the right places. You can also go and do this if you have inherited a data set and you're like, where in the world is all of this stuff coming from? Over in your view ribbon, you can go ahead and click on that query dependencies button and that is going to give you a nice pop-up that shows where your original sources are coming from and your new one and your original sources we want to make sure that those are going to stay here in power query because i don't want to bring in and go into power bi with three separate files i don't want to have an income file a population file and my new one that i just made that's a combination of both of them because that would just be duplicate data so what I want to make sure is that we're going to disable the load of those originals. So right click on each of your original ones, go down to enable load, deselect that. As soon as you do, it's going to go into italics and then you can do the same for the other one. Now you can't delete them because these kind of serve as the link back to the original file. So we're just going to hide them here, squish them up in Power Query and not bring them with us into the desktop. Now we finally have our new combined file that has income and population. If you want to rename that so it gives it a good name, do that for sure. 
And then we know when we do a close and apply to take this in to the desktop, the only thing that will be going through is indeed that new combined one. The other ones are gonna be in the Power Query Editor saved and ready to go. There we go. We've got our income and population with country, income, population, and year. Let's go take a look now at Power Query in Excel, see if there's any differences in this process over there. All right, here we are in Power Query in Excel, and I can see I have my three data sources. So I have income, I have population, and then I have my combined income and population. And this part is just the same. All of the steps in this one were the same, bringing in your data sources, going through the same and any cleaning up steps you would need to do, and then going up to that merge as new to get your third combined item, and then opening up that table to get the column or columns you would need. Now, when we do our close and load, we do our close and load to get back in, to our regular Excel, you can see that right now mine by default are always going to be set and these are just going with connection only. And that is what we would want for our income and our population because we need them to get saved as that connection back to the source. But I do want to be able to use this income and population and not just here. Again, if it was a really, really large file, we would want to be opening that up in Power Pivot. But I don't think this data is that long. I definitely think we can fit it in that million row limit. So what I would want to do instead for this is click on that income and population, click on load to, and now I would have the ability to choose how I would want to see that data. And so for this income population, I'm gonna let's bring that into a table. When I hit okay, then that is gonna pull over my full table. So income and population, those original sources, those are staying as connection only, and then income and population, my combined table that I did my merge for, that I'm able to have here, use, sort through, do whatever I want with my data. I could sort for just certain countries or just certain years or certain incomes. However, I would want to look at the data, I can play around with it and do all of that here in Excel. All right, that is how you were able to do a merge in Power Query. And we looked at this in Power Query in Power BI for the full process, and then also took a look at Power Query in Excel at the end as well. So I hope that you are excited to do your merge and that this helped you out if you were struggling through the process previously. If you have not already, definitely go back and watch those other videos in my Power Query series to see the things you're able to do in Power Query and Power BI and Excel. Also, definitely don't forget to like this video so we know to keep making more and also subscribe to the channel so you'll be the first to know when more videos come out. And now we cover a lot of this content way more in depth in our on-demand learning platform. So if you are not yet over there and you want to go be a member, I'll have that link below and you're able to use code Allison30 to get 30% off. And so I hope to see you in the next video here on YouTube or on our on-demand learning platform soon.